Hey everyone, welcome back to another spray paint tutorial. Today we're going to be doing more trees, a uh, reflection, and I'm going to explain a little bit about custom stencil. The materials that we're using are poster board, spray paint, magazine sheets, a straight edge, palette knife, and a custom stencil, which I will talk more about in a bit. So the first thing you want to do is lay down your stencil and mark where it's going to go, just like you would with a planet of any sort. And then we're going to keep the layer of black really light because the stencil lays directly on the paint as opposed to sitting up like when you use a plant stencil. To assure that we're using as little paint as possible, as you can see I'm using little spurts of paint, as dirty as that sounds, and uh, we're just going to spray in the just the area of where the heart was. And although it looks instantaneous from the time I spray the paint to when I lay it down, you want to wait a minute or two to make sure that the paint uh, where the stencil is going is completely dry. You don't need to hurry or anything like that. It's better to wait and make sure that the paint's dry to make sure that you don't mess up your stencil. Then we're going to cover everything with black. Spray silver or gray, doesn't matter, around the outside. Then we're going to spray white directly around the heart just to make it stand out more. And of course, spray some white on your finger and add some stars in. I like to add plenty. I'm a very starry person. <laughs> We're going to add white towards the bottom where our ground texture is going to go. This is going to make the ground stand out even more since it is just a black, white, and gray painting. And to make our ground texture, all we got to do is push in a small amount of magazine sheet and just draw with your fingers where you want your ground to go. Oh boy, I can breathe finally. <laughs> okay, then you want to be careful removing your stencil. I used the very tip of the palette knife. And that's why you want it to be dry underneath. As you can see, it kind of rubbed where the black was underneath a little bit. So you want to make sure it's dry. And here I'm going to explain a little bit better how I make trees. As you can see, I made like one main branch, and then I kind of build off of that. I always start at the bottom and build off of it. So I always start from the bottom and then scrape up to make more branches. This will naturally uh, make whatever branches you had thicker. It will always make the trunk thicker because if you look at a tree... It would look kind of weird if the trunk of the tree was the smallest part. <laughs> so always scraping from the bottom and going up naturally makes the trunk thicker. And uh, you just build off of that using less and less of the palm knife edge or blade. I know it's really hard to see with my hand, and I will make tutorials in the future about this. But it just takes time or practice. I mean, that's all I did. <laughs> So just keep adding more and more, and you really only use about like the tip of the palette knife when you go to add in like the smaller branches and stuff like that. So usually you'll see me holding like the palette knife close to like the tip, and then I will add more pressure. But since I don't need to add that much, I'm just holding like by the handle. You saw me add some more clear coat. This is because I'm going to uh, brighten up the tree a little bit, go make it stand out a little bit more, almost kind of like adding highlights, but not really. Then we're going to add some more clear coat because the paint was starting to dry since I spent so long on one tree. And we're going to do the same thing over again. Just make the one main trunk branch type thing and then just build off of it. And while I'm making this other one, I'm going to explain the uh, the stencil I used a little bit. It's I didn't buy it or anything. I made it. I All you got to do is take a poster board because it's something you're already going to have for your paintings and draw a heart. I can't draw hearts, so I actually had my mom do it. <laughs> and then I uh, and then you cut it out. So poster board's good to use because the paint doesn't bleed through it, obviously. It's easy to cut. You're already going to have it and everything. If you use something like cardboard that's not glossy, it's going to end up sticking to the painting. I know that from experience. <laughs> that's how I make all my stencils. That's how I make my wolf one, my heart one. I mean, you can make just about anything with it, but poster board's the one thing I found that's best to use. And yeah. <laughs> okay. Next thing you're going to want to do is flip your painting upside down. We're going to work on the reflected side. And you do the exact same thing over again. So that's why I sped all this up. It's because there's nothing really new. You mark where it was. And as you can see, uh, I took a little bit more than half for the top part. So the bottom part's going to be a little bit more shallow. As you can see, like the heart doesn't, the whole heart isn't completely on there. When you look at a reflection, I mean, it looks different than the actual image because of angles and everything like that. Most people aren't going to be speculating and be like, oh, well, you know, this looks wrong. No, they're going to look to see if it's 
reflected and be like, oh, cool. So you don't need to be exact. You need to be close, but not exact exact. If that makes any sense at all. <laughs> oh, man, these, like, five stars are out of place. You suck at art. And yeah. I think I've uh, gotten my point across on reflections. Okay. And this next part, you're going to want to work on king control after you, of course, remove that. So you don't want it to overlap too much. You don't want it to, like, create mist on the other half because you want the reflection to be a complete separate thing. And to make the ground texture for this, uh, I just used a section of magazine sheet because if you use too big of it, a uh, section, it might overlap into the other part of the painting and screw it up. And you'll see here in a minute, all I do is uh, rip off just like a small section, and I just start dabbing away. It gives about the same effect. If it comes out a little bit worse, that's fine. Uh, we're going to basically be covering up quite a bit of this in a little bit when we go to add our uh, reflection. Uh, the main thing that makes it look like a reflection, I guess. Okay, then we're going to add some clear coat, and we're going to add some trees again. And nobody's really pointed this out to me before, but I noticed that when I was making the painting, when I was editing it, and when I edit this video, I screwed up really bad on the reflection, but yet a lot of people really like this painting. That goes to show you that, you know, I've been doing this for years, I still screw up, so it's okay if you screw up. And, you know, on this painting, even if you don't reflect the trees directly exactly the same, people are still going to get the idea. They're not going to be looking at the reflection in detail. They're going to be looking at the top part in detail and just seeing that the bottom part's reflected and be like, oh, cool, you know, it's reflected into water and stuff like that. So they should be relatively close, like go in the same direction, like pay attention to which way your trees are leaning and things like that and how many branches there are. People will notice if you only have like one tree down below for it's going the wrong way. So you want to keep it close, but it doesn't need to be, you know, completely exact. And I'm taking my sweet old time on these trees. <laughs> okay, then we're going to flip it back over and, and uh, we're going to add the finishing touches. Take a straight edge, lay it down as horizontal as possible. That sounds weird, but hopefully you get the idea by looking at it. We're going to add a pretty heavy amount towards the, uh, the horizon or where the reflection meets the actual painting. And then you're going to lightly do the rest of the painting with white. And I say lightly because you don't want to cover up your painting down below. You want to just make it look different. That's about it. And then if you want, you can add like a shimmer or a bright line going down the middle to really show that brightness. And you can also blend the white paint. You can smear it back and forth like when you go to make water to make it really look like it's water. I like the idea of still water, and this makes it, you know... It just, I like the, <laughs> I like the idea. I can't get the words out right. <laughs> I just like how it looks like that. You can do whatever you want, though. This is just guidelines for it. But really, that's about it, guys. That's how you do the reflected heart painting that people have asked about. <laughs> As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my uh, other tutorials. Remember to like, comment, subscribe if you like my videos and they're helpful. And that's about it. I will see you guys later.